Hello everyone and welcome to the fans POV at DragonCon 2014 in Atlanta, Georgia. I am your host, Chrissy Lawler, and with me are some very familiar faces. Uh, to my right, we have, you know, the always favorite Ernie. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and the one who's literally following us on our, almost our entire con schedule this week, this year, this Steven. Week Hello. <laughs> Hello. And the one we only see at Dragon Con, Tom. What's up? <laughs> so, yep, we're at our, one of our probably, I think most of our staff, well, the only ones who have attended Dragon Con. It's our favorite con, I think. I'm pretty much, okay. yeah. Yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll ask that later about how, how you. It's the only reason why I extended. Go to this one. Yeah, true. Yeah, if it wasn't so awesome, we wouldn't be here. And that, and it's, you know what, for us, it's a vacation. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, we are in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, it's probably, on a regular schedule, it's probably the furthest, furthest we've ever gone from home. It's not the farthest we've ever been, but on a regular basis. It's the only one we've been consistently going to for the past four years. Steven, since this was your first time going to Dragon Con, <laughs> what were your expectations going, uh, uh, coming to Atlanta and, and Dragon Con? My expectations were from what everyone has told me is it's a drunken mess <laughs> and it wasn't all a drunken mess but I was a drunken mess I have a rum bucket here um, yeah it was fun though I, I liked it because it wasn't just anime which is all I ever go to um, but yeah I expected just more than just anime and a lot of people well, okay that leads into it what was your first impression when you first got here that's a lot of people and it's a drunken mess. <laughs> Just kidding. It wasn't a mess. It was actually very well coordinated, I thought. But yeah, I, I, I was very pleased. But yeah, it was, it was really good. I liked it a lot. A lot. All right. Well, I know um, from some of our other shows, every time we'll talk about other conventions, I'm like, Chris always goes right into, well, Dragon Con. So I know we've been telling you a lot about Dragon Con. So you probably had a lot more expectations. You just couldn't think of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, Normally the panels we really don't talk too much about because we usually don't go to a lot of panels at most cons because we just we just like wandering the con. But we did go to panels, so we're gonna. So I was gonna start off with Tom since you do cover a lot of. Um, what panels did you go to? Uh, Dragon Con, I go to writer panels, uh, panels for guests from uh, TV shows, uh, sci-fi ones, uh, just different book panels. Things that they have panels with people who would tell you how to write and how to do movies, stuff like that. I went to a few of those. Uh, I went to about three or four panels which were for different shows. I went to one for Once Upon a Time. I went for Arrow. Um, I know I went to a few others. I can't think off the top of my head what I went to. But, uh, you know, there's definitely a few panels I went to. Uh, I went to the Filk uh, track a few times because uh, a lot of the bands, I, the band that I really like uh, performs a lot of them. Uh, me and Chrissy went to a panel for Dragon, uh, uh, it's uh, Firefly Drinking Songs, it's a panel they didn't have last year, I was very upset by that, but it's definitely a panel I love to go to. So uh, that's really, uh, there are always panels if you're inter interested in them, Dragon Con is a great amount of panels, they have panels all over the place for almost everything, so. Did you go to any, Stephen? Um, I went to a few, I went to my friend Caitlin Glass's panel. That was always fun because she's just like adorable and fantastic and she knows it too. Um, so she's really great. Um, I went to a comedy writing panel. It was more of a workshop but it was really good. It really helped me out because it was just really good. It was just really good. Um, I also went to um, the Ghost Hunters panel um, which was really cool. They're really cool people. They're very normal down-to-earth human beings so that was nice to see. Um, and I also went to a Godzilla panel, which was awesome, because Godzilla's great. And, uh, yeah, I went to, it was good. It was good. I went, to, um, good times, a lot of panels. Ernie, did you go to any? Um, the only panels, let's see, I went to the Masquerade, if you count that as a panel, yeah. Let's see, and then I went to a conventions runner. A con runners roundtable, which was sort of a panel, but it was more just a discussion between everybody and like in terms of um, conventions, how to run them, what to do with certain uh, 
with certain problems that they had, like one pro one convention down in um called SpideyCon down in Lake Charles, Louisiana, has problem with volunteers, so they ask, okay, how do we get volunteers? Another one was talking about, okay, how do you compete with conventions that are bad mouthing your convention? So that was that was one thing to talk about there. They talked about like just just all sorts of different things that were going on. Like, okay. so th that was a, it was a pretty cool panel. And I go to the I go to something like that every year, which is um how to run an anime convention. But they kind of switched it up and they just did a con runners roundtable. So it was nice. It was a cool time. All right. Um, but now, like Tom said, I th um, pretty much the the main panels that I went to that weren't band performances. I went to Once Upon a Time. Uh, on Friday with him because I think there were like one every day this weekend but I knew it was going to be a pain to get into half of them so I'm like you know what if I get into one I'll be happy maybe an hour not even an hour because um, I think a lot of the times certain rooms because it was one of the centennial ballrooms in the Hyatt and those are the big rooms so they start lines in special locations around the build around the building um, and since the attendance record is getting ever the tents the attendance is getting higher and higher obviously longer lines, longer waits. And they had it off to the side, but they didn't form the line right away. So it didn't seem like as long of a wait. Um, went to the Firefly Drinking Song panel. And I think those are pretty much the only panels I went to. There was one or two other panels I was gonna go to, but by the time they got there, the rooms were full. And we're like, you know what, let's go do something else. <laughs> so I think, cause we, usually we go to the Marvel versus DC trivia panel, but by the time we got there, the line was ridiculous, so we just went to a uh, band performance up that was nearby. But, all right, since I'm talking about that, we'll talk about um, Dragon Con has a lot, and I mean a lot of musical performers. For, and they literally have musical performers for almost every genre you can find. Uh, Vault, they have usually Vol Voltaire's a regular. Was he this year? Yes, he was. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Voltaire. Our, our usual favorite, me and Chris's usual favorite, Emerald Rose. Uh, Tom's favorite, Pandora Celtica. Uh, the one that we thought wasn't here last year, but he's not listed as a guest. Uh, Mark Gunn, he's listed on the under the Bardiganian Bards. He's part of, like, I, I guess it's a duo. It's a duo, him and another Bard. So when they're listed in the guest list, they're listed under that instead of their individual names. Uh, but always love Mark Gunn, especially when he used to come to Icon. Uh, and the, just the list goes on and on and. You can, also request, you can also request bands um, and rate them on the app or even on the website. You can ask, like, oh, you know, I heard this band that I really like. I would love to see if they could come. Or they were there last year. Could you bring them back? Because they love to get input back from the uh, people. And yeah, yeah that's what they're, they're always what? about input. Right. Well, well I'm gonna t we're going to talk about that later because that has to do with the app. Um, but, yeah, a lot. Everyone always has, you will always find some uh, niche each one will have a niche because of the fact that there's so many genres and there's so many tracks and the band and a lot of them are also a few of them are comedy com performers but um we'll, we'll start with um well, i just want to say one other thing um one of, one of the best things about the uh bands is the they have the concord stages well, I was gonna go yeah um that. all right well yeah. <laughs> all right. i'll go i want to go into that like Seems to be part of it. No, no, but I want to talk about the bands first, and then we'll. Um, all right, we'll we'll start. To, um, Ernie, did you go to any band performances? I went to one. I went to uh, Emerald Rose. Their okay. final, the yeah, at the Concourse stage. Well, it was also like that's the one I actually attended. Yeah. Every time that I went to the um, the Hilton to go for photo shoots, there's a Concourse stage there, and there were bands playing there. Like I didn't get the name of the band, but it was still fun to listen right. and use it as background music. Right, then, we'll, then we'll talk about the Concourse sta the Concourse oh, yeah. stage. Um, I'll bring it up briefly. What it is is they've had it for quite a few years. It's just a stage in the Hyatt. At first, it was just a stage in the Hyatt. They've changed the locations in the Hyatt to, depending on the space. Um, the past couple of years, it's been on the same floor as the Artist, artist Alley Artist sh Art Show right outside. Um, but this year, they added a new one to where one of the usual photo shoot locations are back behind the Hilton. The back steps, the there. Back steps there is usually a very popular place for photo, uh, photo shoots large group photo shoots but they added a new stage over there uh, along with I think what you said was food drinks yeah, so they made it like a little mini lounge almost yeah. so that is it's a popular place besides having performers have their own like concerts in either panel rooms or in state rooms with actual stages and with seating this is a, a hall it's basically a hallway performance to get attention so if people are walking past they're like oh this oh this sounds cool let me stop and listen to them for a little bit or as you're walking through you like oh cool music it's a good way to get 
It's a good publicity. It's good publicity for the band, and it also it's a good way of opening people up to bands and maybe even genres that they normally wouldn't listen to. But if they're walking past and they like a song, you know what? I like this. So, but uh, anything else on the stage? Not much, but I'm going to say uh, I was uh, very sad last year that Pandora Celtic wasn't here, and they came back this year. I was very happy about that. Uh, as for the Concord Siege, I actually heard them for the first time, I guess, four years ago on the stage. I only came because, you know, the three of them were coming to meet uh, Chrissy and Ernie and Chris were coming to see Emma Rose and learn a little bit more about the con. I decided to join them and uh, met Pandora Celtica. Love them. I loved. I, I still go to Emma Rose every once in a while. I love them. Uh, this year I heard a few other bands like uh, the Gin Revolution, a uh, uh, few other little... Mikey, Mikey Mason, great guy, great funny, funny songs he has. Uh, but uh, I mean, like I heard a, f <laughs> yeah, I heard a few. Uh, I mean, like I said, uh, all of these people they have great performances, and I, uh, like I said, the Concord Stage is probably the best thing because if you have nothing to do for like an hour or two, it's a great thing to go down there. You can listen to a band or two, and you'll find out a little bit about them. You'll learn a little bit about them, and maybe you find out, oh, this is a great band. I love their song. I love it like that. You know, you can uh, meet them. You can get their CDs that they may have. Uh, just different things like that. It's really cool. Um, you know, I don't know if you want to say anything yeah. else. Uh, did you go to any band performances? I just went to one. I went to see Emerald Rose for my brother. Um, they were really good. They were really, really talented, and I jammed a little bit <laughs> in the back row. And actually, it was, was kind of cool because I guess he recognized me from when we met. Because, oh, okay. like, as he was, uh, the, I, I don't know his name, Which? the guitar. The, the one, the one off to the in the front row. That was uh, Logan. He saw me and he just like pointed, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> and that was cool. They were really good. Um, I enjoyed the music. It was really good. Yeah, um, the only ones I, the only ones I used to only go, I used to only go to Emerald Rose. Uh, I think one of the times I went with you for, um, I think Pandora was like playing beforehand or afterhand, and we stopped to listen. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool. So I went with you to a couple of Pandora, and I think we went to go to Pandora, but they weren't playing yet. And that's when Mikey Mason went on on stage first. So I'm like, oh, and he, was funny as hell. Oh, that was fantastic. So, but yeah, the music. I think that's one of my favorite things coming to the Dragon Con is the music. Cause, like it's definitely like I said, it's a sh for every genre, and it's also. I love panels, but even for me, the music is by far the best thing here. The bands, they're they're amazing. They're all, everybody's considerate there, and they they just love to, they love to even ask you, you know, do you want a song that we can perform, and you know that just really helps in them involving you, the, the uh, people watching them. You know, they they do it for them. And a lot of them are really the guy. Besides the music themselves, just them when they talk in between songs oh, yeah. and all, they're freaking funny. Besides the music, besides the panels, yes. uh, there. Are, what was that? Yes. Um, there are a lot of guests. Wow, are there a lot of guests? They say it's uh, over 400 guests here. Wow. I'm not gonna lie. I just counted in the book. I only got to L, and we had over 200 already. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, th here, hold that up. This booklet has all the guests in it. That's just what it is, is the guests. It's, it's, it's a thick book. It's you know? a thick book and it's just guests. Like, like the last, like maybe this much of it is advertisements, advertisements for uh, maybe writers and, and bands. The rest of this, almost two thirds of it, three, three quarters of it is all just guests that they have. And that's including the bands, uh, writer, the last, yeah. The last third, last quarter, last, last yeah. third is bands and Bands, writers, writers artists, artists, yeah. It's, it's just. Yeah, sure. it's just movie, TV, um, voiceover, li uh, live acting, everything. everything. And like you said, it's, it's like 400 something guests, and it's it is crazy. Um, also, they have, there'll be a lot of those kind of guest panels, and some of those, the lines to get in are ridiculous. So if there's a, ever a guest here that you want to see, and you know they have a panel, you're gonna have to go really early to get online. Yeah. I'm gonna ask Steven, cause you probably think you did a little more socializing than we did. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, with the hotels, did you think it was hard with having all those locations? Did I think it was hard? Yeah, having so many to negotiate where you had to go. Oh, for. Yeah. No, I thought it was okay. Um, the only thing that like confused me um, was just one of the sky bridges, Hollow Fly. 
was just on like a different like on like a bottom level i think it was the marriott the one to get to the hilton that was the only one that like took me a little bit to like figure out but no i actually thought it was okay because actually the best thing which i think everyone was ignoring was when you walked into the hotels they had the giant signs that told you exactly where everything was and so that was really helpful and if yeah and then if you didn't know where something was you just had to ask someone that worked at the hotel i thought it was okay the only thing that i think really annoyed me was it wasn't even like annoying it was just like the sky bridges got like stuffed oh, with yeah. like people and con funk and sad <laughs> so yeah but other than that i thought it was okay now i just want to um because like we've um probably said in the past but um, if you've never been to Dragon Con, Dragon Con is held in five hotels, the Westin, the Hyatt, the Marriott, the Hilton, and the Sheridan. This, uh, last year they added also the America's Mart, and that's where they, would ho- that's where they hold the dealer's room, rooms, because yeah, um, like it takes two floors. But the, it's just, it's in a big area, and some people, like, running around uh, it's just so big and that's just to give you an idea and it still gets packed so oh, yeah. much we actually went uh saturday right saturday do we go to the well we'll talk about dealers well, we'll talk, um yeah we're gonna talk dealers yeah well can yeah. i start now with it yeah start with dealers um I, did we go when did we go well, for saturday or something saturday, saturday. when well, we act- was a three hour line to get it. um yeah. well actually what happened was on saturday uh most people don't know this, but there's two ways into the building. The first way is uh, going in, go, yeah, going into the street level on the first floor, and you have to be out on the sh- on uh, Peachtree uh, Street. We uh, actually, the Westin is connected directly to it by a sky bridge of its own, and me and Chrissy, me and Chrissy uh, hopped on that line. That line, the line outside was I think two and a half hours long. We jumped on that. We were inside in 30 minutes, but as we were getting close to the front, they told us that. The building would be closing in 30 minutes because the fire marshal showed up and said, "This is too packed. You have to kick people out. You have to close down." Yeah, yeah, they, they, in they, a, in a they, they pretty much told people you can't go up to the second floor. You can't do this. You can't do that, and that you had to start leaving. So I mean, uh, me and Chris we were lucky at that point, but we, you know, it, it did take a while to get in there, and there, were, there's a lot of dealers. It's ridiculous how many people there are, but. But I mean, like like we said, it, it gets just as packed as you know. Stephen said the uh, sc- the bridges and you know it's just every everywhere is just it's just a very big con with a lot of people. So, I mean, next year they're moving. Yeah. I'll yeah. All right. Um, did you get anything? Uh, I got a few things at the dealer's room. Um, I actually LARP, so I actually picked up a few latex weapons. Um, they sell real weapons. They sell. Shirts, hats. Uh, I actually was thinking about picking up a Jane hat for Firefly. I did not, though, but that was due to a little bit of money problems and my own not wanting to spend money. Um, <laughs> um, what else? They sell pictures, uh, or signed autographs. Uh, you can, you can. Uh, bo- you got a book. They sell books. They sell mangas. Uh, like you can go in there you can find almost anything to do with sci-fi fantasy um there's a hundred or there's at least like 20 30 leather shops in there with different leather stuff you can buy um almost every single one of them have a card uh not all some of them actually don't actually sell anything online they own but they do have they go to conventions all the time and they're like here's my card see what other conventions we might be at so you can stop by and pick up what you want from us yep. so what did you think about the dealer's room it was huge. Um, I definitely didn't see all of it. I definitely didn't see all of it. Um, but it was cool. I was glad I got to see some friends that I bumped into in there. Um, they sold a lot of different stuff, which was really cool. A lot of stuff I wanted to buy, but I didn't because I have self-control sometimes. Um, but yeah, actually, it was funny. I walked into the first floor, and I was like, oh, this isn't that big. And then I didn't realize, like, the room was attached to other rooms, which was attached to other rooms, which was attached to the other rooms. And then upstairs, it's like a giant football field. So, actually, it was, yeah, it was huge. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm also... like, bigger than the whole bottom floor. Yeah, and I'm also glad I got to see Yaya. She's adorable, and she smells delicious. She knows it. And so is her boyfriend, apparently. Yeah. Uh, fiance, I'm sorry, fiance. fiance. I'm sorry, I just have the habit. Um, Ernie, did you go to the dealer's room? 
Uh, yes, I did. I went on Monday when it wasn't as crowded <laughs> as it was, as everybody says. Um, I went there and it is big. It, it's it's also a maze. That's the one thing I noticed is that it's very confusing, and that's one of the things. And then I'll I'll dip into it now. But uh, I was just gonna say a lot of the. A lot of the places from uh, last year were in the same places they were this year. Yeah. That was actually very helpful to me because I knew certain places I would rather check out than other places. Yeah. So I didn't have to, like, you know, navigate. They, a lot of them kept the same places even when they were all the way in the back and they might have been there earlier. They were like, no, let's go to the same place so people will know where we are. Yeah, yeah I, thought, I only noticed, like, one or two vendors actually may have changed spots. But I, for the most part, I think 95% of the vendors were all in the same location they were last year. Um, all right. Well, um, to answer your question, Chrissy, I did buy something. <gasps> yes, I did. I, I bought a uh, a license plate from uh, Back to the Future oh, okay. to at a time. So that's I figured that, of course. Yeah, yes. All right. And then um, also at closing ceremonies, they did announce that they're moving the dealers room from building one to building two, which, which is bigger. which is bigger, higher ceilings, and they could actually fit. I think they said. Um, they could fit programming in there. That's good. So the one of my, so that's a good thing there. My second question is though, is that are they still going to use Building One? And I did not get a chance to ask them that. So if they use Building One, that could help disperse crowds. So if they have both Building One and Two, since they reach such, since yeah. Dragon Con is known for crowds, oh, yeah, you know, just spread it out and you'll be fine. Were, were yeah. you actually hear a rumor that they were going to like stop the sales of everything? Yeah, there was a rumor that I heard. Is like I, I don't know how like it's a rumor basically, is that they were thinking about capping it, and actually attendance cap is one of their biggest issues they have every year. They've always had that issue come up. I think it's that along with uh, line management, but that's a different story. But since now, first year here. Yeah, first first year was I think it was capped, but no no the first year the western. Yeah. Oh, the first year of the Western, yeah. And then the so, next year, would they are they? And then the following year, they, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, well, yeah. yeah. Well, we're going off on tangents, but for dealers' room, they're moving it from building one to building two. Just try to get more dealers and get like more of an open space. It's a, it's basically one huge building that you can see everything at. You don't have two different floors. They might keep the zones here. They have different zone colors, is what I notice as well. Yeah. And just um. I think it's a good thing, you know, they, uh, if they could fit more in that building, they could get the crowd dispersed and they don't have the fire marshal coming in. You know, it's a good thing, so good job on that. But the dealer's room, yo, know, it has everything, so, and I bought something, so. Um, I want to start down at this end for, yeah. with Ernie first, but what it is is with the Artist Alley is they'll have, half of it is Artist Alley, like, a normal, normal like, well, some of the anime conventions will have the Artist Alley with artists selling their, 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 like, yeah. Fan yeah. fan yeah. picks and all that kind of stuff, and then the other half will be art show, where it's canvas paintings and sculptures and those kind of works. Is it like a silent auction almost? Um, it is a silent. It's a silent. It's a silent auction. It is a silent auction, and they're very strict when it comes to photography and all that in there, which I I completely understand. Uh, no cameras. They're very strict on if you come in with a bag, they either zip tie it, and if you've purchased anything in the artist alley and you go into there, they will put. Post it on there and write how, what, how, how, I think they have like a code with it, how yeah. much, how many pieces are in your bag, and they want to make sure that when you leave, you exactly. have the same amount of packages. So, all right, uh, Ernie, what did you think about the Art Sally, and did you go to the art show? Um, I, w I had a chance to go through, okay. I had the chance to go through Art Sally. I went, I went strolling by, it's not usually my thing, but I, from the works that I've seen, they're very, very talented, so I think the, I had a fun time looking through all the different Artist Alley stuff there and then went to the art show itself and I'm just looking around and just amazement. And at the prices of some of these, I'm just like, I want to buy one, but I can't. And then secondly, after that thought crosses my head, then it's like, how the hell am I going to get it home? So it's just sort of, uh, so it's sort of like, you know, the Artist Alley and the art show, they good times. If you really want to see some talented artists, you should definitely go there. Definitely check it out. So, okay, that's all I gotta say about Artist Alley. Right. Steven, did you go to Artist Alley? Yes. Um, I say this really every time I go to an Artist Alley or, and do this, but 
It's just incredible to me to see the talent that just shows up to these things. And I think the thing that was different about this one was the fact that there was a lot more canvas paintings. Um, you never, I never seen that before. Certain and that well, I mean, for me personally, no, there was canvases in the art artist alley. Yeah, and um, it was just really, really awesome. And uh, you know, I just respect them so much because like you know I actually get really nervous to ever display my stuff in an artist alley and I always like apply but then I revoke it because I'm like I can't do it I don't want to do it and so I just give them a lot of props their stuff is amazing and good for them I you know I wish I could have bought everything um, and it was also nice because it was more varied again than just an anime con you saw way different kinds of things and different mediums and it was just really awesome I really liked it a lot um we behaved uh, yeah, uh, me and Christy did behave. We did not spend over a hundred dollars each in the artist alley. I actually, yeah, I spend. I, I I buy less things in. I buy more things in the artist alley and spend almost as much as I do in the dealer's room when I buy one or two things at like sixty, seventy dollars each. <laughs> yeah, um, the um, the artist alley is amazing. I, I cannot believe the amount of art that. Every time I go in there, I am just flabbergasted by the artist alley. It's beautiful, but I I, I die when I go into the art show. I I truly, uh, I mean, like the, as Ernie said, they do have a silent auction. The when you go in, everything is priced at price one, where it's just straight buy it out before anybody else can auction on it. A price for the auction, and then after the auction, which I believe is Sunday night. Um, Thank it. But that's the price you would I, pay if nobody bids. Yeah, then there's another uh, price that you can buy it at that point after nobody bids. Sometimes, though, that price is actually above the bid of right before buying it before the auction, so whatever. But sometimes it drops. Uh, but, I mean, like, it's, it's always amazing. Uh, I actually, I think last year, I actually, uh, they started doing a print show, like some of the canvases. They would print them out and put them in a separate area, and I actually bought one or two. Um, this year I actually wanted to buy one and I was so upset when I went there I, that they had sold, they had a few copies of it and they sold them all. I think they said by Sunday, we went Monday and I, w I couldn't find it. But uh, I was lucky enough to, they get, got the artist from me and he uh, told me I, I could order it online and stuff so I was pretty happy about that. Um, I actually have a few pieces from the art alley that I'm going to show right now if that's okay with everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that, that usually the artist alley is really hard for me and Tom, especially me. I uh, oh yeah, if the artist if you if the artist is there at the table, he will sign it, and if he's not there, whoever is there selling his stuff will let you know when he will be the artist will be back to uh, to sign it. This one's Harley Quinn. Uh, very nice picture. I actually, when I bought it, the artist wasn't there. So you went back and got it signed on Monday. And, and this one is a Scarlet Witch, you think? Scarlet yeah, Scarlet Witch. Uh, I actually. Unfortunately, Chrissy wanted to walk through the artist alley again, and I saw them and had said, I have to pick these up, and I hate myself a little bit for it, and I also hate her for making me do that, but uh, yeah, I did, uh, I did end up buying more again, but uh, I mean, thank thankfully these actually stopped me from having any more room in my room to put on the wall, so I will not be able to do buy any more unless I remove some stuff. Yeah, um, usually I buy, like last year I think we bought so much art from the artist alley, um, the only reason I got one this year is because it was part of that buy one free, get one free, buy two get one free. So Tom got, so I got one. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, which one was it? The uh, Rogue. Rogue. Oh, you bought the Nightwing. Oh, okay, I forgot about that. Um, I bought Rogue. Oh, oh. Rogue from X Men. Um, there was another artist I saw a piece that I wanted to get. Uh, two pieces I wanted to get. They were Batman with all the Robins, but he only had the sketches of them. He had didn't have them inked or colored, but he said he will eventually in the future. So. Yeah, so I got his got his information. I want them, because for those who don't know, I am a huge Batman Nightwing fan. Yeah, yeah, I know, because Tom and I, you know, when when Nightwing or Batman or Batgirl show up, it's like I want. Um, but I was well behaved this year because mo mainly the fact is I don't have wall space to put up these pictures. And a lot of the artists they don't do the eight by ten, the eight by ten, eight by eleven and a half, which I like to put in my binder. But they usually have they'll have like that size or, or bigger, the poster size ones. And I'm like I don't have any wall space to put them up. Otherwise they would I would have tons. But yeah. Um, next we're gonna go to is 
uh, special events, main events, um, pretty much concerts at, with at, com, at Dragon Con. Like we did, we I keep them separate because there's so many get, uh, voice uh, music musical guests. So we talked about them earlier. So pretty much the only one that's really left is any major like party events and the masquerades. Yeah. Ernie, you're the one who has to deal with the masquerades. Yes, I did. Went to the masquerade. It was a fun. T- oh. It was a fun time. It was um, what it is. What they do with the masquerade, they have a separate children's and adult div- division, so that way they can give awards for it. The children's division was huge. I think they had about twenty entries for it, and then for the adults, I think they had at least thirty. So at least fifty entries. Most of them were walk-ons. Others were they had skits there, and the skits were fun. Uh, let's see. With the masquerade. Um, I remember there was this one cosplay duo. They did fro- they did Frozen, but they were from Paris. They won. No, they were from Paris. They went to a convention in London. They went to London, I think London Comic Con, London Super Comic Con. They won the masquerade there, and their reward was a trip to Dragon Con. Wow. And they since they were here. No. Oh, well, that could be them. But yeah, there were two girls. They were doing Elsa and Anna, and that was a memorable skit. I think. Um, Elsa came in and she had, um, she was putting out snow, but it was like these these streamers that came out of her hands. It was awesome. Let's see. Um, there was this another one. There was this there was this uh, old old couple. They did the marionette scene from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Oh my god. Yeah, it's, I knew you would like that a lot. Yeah, they did the they did the they did the entire scene to it. Like the whole song. They did the whole song and they also did. One of the the female one was like in the pose, like going around in a circle. That was a really good one. Let's see, uh, what else was there? What else was really good? I'm trying to think of what was really. Uh, it, it was top. There was like there was a lot of good cosplays in there. There's a lot of memorable skits, especially those two. Those are the most memorable to me. Uh, let's see. So that was that was a pretty major. The masquerade was a fun time. And also, I wanted to mention during the. Um, the Friday night costume contest. I wonder. I was like, I don't know, like, just because I'm a sadistic person, but I just want to see the robot falling off the stage. I don't know if anybody heard about this. Like, at the end of the masker, at the end of the Friday night costume contest, all the winners were in a row, and the the hosts were interviewing them, and the robot started to lean back, and he actually fell off the stage. And we were watching it on Dragon Con TV. And I just hear everybody in the room laughing, except because I was in the bathroom, I was doing something. Everybody was laughing. You know, just, you just hear like, oh, oh, and you just see, oh. But I, I, at one point, I would like to see that. I, I know it's sadistic, but I think that. But yeah, and, yeah, especially us. Yeah, let's see. Like they usually have a costume contest every night, and the masquerade on Sundays, the main one that they have. I didn't go on Saturday because we were at the aquarium. Yeah, which we'll talk about a little bit. But yeah, but Masquerade's fun time. If you get a chance, you should go see it. Even though the line wraps around the block. It was when it wrapped around the block where I was. I think I was on the corner of um, Spring Street and Andrew Young International. Oh, no, not there, but... Yeah, yeah they, they passed us. It was like Tom and a couple of our other friends. Where I got in there was about halfway in the ballroom. I was halfway there. Like, it filled up, but it... If the line goes from the Hyatt all the way to the Sheraton, you'll probably get in. So that's um, that's one thing to avoid there. But yeah, other than that, Masquerade was fun. We have a video about it, so I have a music video that could be up there. So. All right. Well, you know what? I was going to go into cosplayers, but here's another topic that involves cosplayers we'll talk about first. So we might as well talk about the, the you mentioned it, the um, Dragon Con... Uh, night at the Aquarium. It's basically um, George Atlanta Aquarium night, Dragon Con night, where they it closes. Usually the aquarium closes at f- uh, I think it's five o'clock. The aquarium closes at five o'clock on that Saturday. What they do is they reopen at seven o'clock. And at first I thought it was only for Dragon Con badge holders, but we found it it's not. Oh. Pretty much it's anybody can walk go in, but it is. Um, with Dragon Hunt, you can, it's 7 to 11 o'clock. Um, you can pre-reg online or you can do at the door. They also have the VIP special because yeah. they, they have the one ballroom where you can, it's special. Um, we just started that this year. Oh, that was this just this year. We okay. Just started it this year. Um, where basically cosplayers will go and just to get their picture taken in front of all the exhibits in the tanks. Oh, my God. Uh, Steven, I'm going to start with you. 
especially since it was also your first time going to the Georgia Aquarium, which we always rec we recommend you, if you're going to come, go to the aquarium. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I, the aquarium was just so cool. Um, I'm sad I didn't get to see my friend. I'm sad I didn't get to see my friend Ramiro. He moved away, so he wasn't working there anymore. That was a bummer, but that's all good because I saw so many cool cosplayers there. There was a cool dance party in the middle of everything. That was pretty awesome to see. They had a costume. Um, yeah, they had a costume contest. Um, I got to see whale sharks, which is really cool. They had a huge tank. Um, Chrissy let me try to photograph some of the cosplayers. I think I did okay. Oh, did um, and just the exhibits were really, really cool. I saw some fish I'd never seen before. And but on the con standpoint, it was just really cool to see like cosplayers posing in front of like you know the tanks and stuff. We got some really cool photos and um, yeah, it was just a really good time. I it was awesome. The music was fun. Um, I made a vlog about it. Shameless self promotion right in the video. Um, no, but really though, it was it was a good time. It was really really fun. Hey, anyway. Oh, uh, about the aquarium. Yeah. The aquarium was a lot of fun because um, we took. We took a lot of video of cosplayers, and we actually made one and a half, I guess you could say, videos on it. It was fun just seeing, the, like, just see how they all interact with, like, the surroundings that they have. Because you have your usual hotel surrounding, and especially at Dragon Con, they're always the same. It is so good to see something different. Uh, to see, like, the bio, see a Bioshock cosplay group walk through the tunnel from the aquarium to the shark tank. That was amazing to see. But see, it was awesome to see... Uh, Ursula in the, in the, from the Little Mermaid, like, sitting on, like, this round, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's a circular, uh, uh window that looks into the tank. Yeah. And she sat on the window, and she had her two flound, uh, Jetsam, yeah. uh, I forgot the fish. Flotsam and Jetsam. Flotsam and Jetsam. And just to see her, and she interacted with another Little Mermaid cosplayer. Like, oh, yeah. that was, like, with the, with the water and the fish behind them. Oh, yeah, that was just amazing there. And it's just, it's so good to, like... It's just awesome to see, and it was it was cool all over, overall, and just yeah, that's you you have to go to it. It knocks out two things. It knocks out yeah, you have a Dragon Con night at the aquarium. Hey, you get to hang out with cosplayers and have a good time there, and then secondly, you get to go see the aquarium. Yeah, that's basically. And also, Steven Tyler was there. Yeah. Apparently, Steven Tyler was at at the aquarium the night that we were, and yep. I wish we used to you know. I know Chris is mad because. Yeah. Aerosmith's here and he's not here, so. Uh, I thought the one cool thing I thought was it's you had in front of the whale shark tank, which is a huge wall tank, is Aquaman and his wife Mira are standing in front while all the fish are interacting behind them. And then we also did some more Bioshock characters, I think, in front of the tank. It's just the. It, because a lot of the a lot of the cosplayers, they will pick specific cosplays that will look good. Like a lot of Little Mermaid, yeah, any oh god, so many freaking um, a lot of humanized Pokemon, and they did and they did uh, aquatic ones. Um, when you were saying how they had the dance party, of course you had all the um, what you call it, Deadpool's interacting with everybody, uh, and then also the aquarium has like a giant whale shark and manta ray that they have on, on kind of like on sticks and they float them around a giant uh hermit crab yeah they had a crab in the park yeah and, and starfish so it's just it's a it's a party it's a party outside the con but it's it is the con so it's it's so much fun and cosplayers so we're going to talk about cosplayers uh any we'll just do i'm just going to ask you all and then you just talk about it yourself any trends any particular ones that stood out and your favorite so i'm gonna do steven do me yeah um th there was so many ariels that was a big trend um that's i think the only trend i saw that i can think of of course there was also you know the frozen characters that, that will never stop that yeah. not as many but there was definitely some actually um one of the coolest cosplayers i think was Zombie Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask. That was really, really cool. Um, also, the Beatles. They were Those two were probably my favorites. The zombie versions of Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask and the Beatles. Because they kept walking across the streets and just like freezing. And it was awesome. Those were my favorites. Alright, uh, I'll go to Tom. Are you not ready? Alright, Ernie. Um, I'll, then I'll talk about... Um, 
Yeah, definitely. I saw a lot of Sailor, um, a lot of Little Mermaid. That was really big. Uh, I just actually, to me, I didn't really see a trend. I just and nothing really stood out like in previous years because everything I've seen, I didn't see a lot of new stuff and nothing that went, oh my god, that is so brilliant. But obviously, yes, a lot of them are brilliant because because some of the ideas of like the mashup cosplays, the crossover cosplays, the uh, the. Gender Ben cosplays. There are a lot of those. I actually expected a lot more um, Rob Williams cosplays than I did see. I know there was a photo shoot, a, cos a um, Rob Williams tribute cosplay photo shoot on Friday, um, but I saw the whole weekend, I saw two Mrs. Doubtfires. Um, but I actually expected a little bit more. But definitely uh, cosplaying here at Dragon Con is just amazing. Because, the, the le like I've been saying for the past couple cons, and I said it at a, at, like at a Kai con, the level of cosplay is just getting better and better, and it's amazing. Um, I don't really think I have a favorite, but some of them are just so wonderful, and it's probably right at this point right now the only con I go to that I cosplay as. I do my um, Power Rangers in Space costume, and I do my, my Renaissance uh my Renaissance Fair gear. So it's just, it's so much fun to cosplay. Even if, you know what, I know some cosplayers love when they get, they get stopped for photos. I, you know, I, would I like it? It would be awesome. But sometimes I just, the fact that, look, I made this and I get to wear it and I'm not getting the, the most weird, weird looks that anyone could ever get. So I'm happy with that. Uh, you guys ready? Yeah, I think so. All right. Um, the trends that I saw, there are actually two trends. Is um, The first one is mashups. Obviously, like, it just, blending two things together that really shouldn't be together. Like the zombie Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask. There was a Muppet Homer... S Warhammer. What was it? Muppets Warhammer. Muppets Warhammer. Even Muppets Star Wars. Um, let's see, there was a mashup of The Simpsons and Transformers. Yeah. That was there. Um, I, I just There were just so many different things that you can take like two genres or even a show in a genre and you put it together and that's what that was the trend is and that's actually been the trend for Dragon Con for the past at least two or three years that that's a big trend there and then something recently the second thing that I saw recently that has been done is cos off like I like to call off the wall cosplays there was a guy who cosplayed as Minesweeper yeah there was the one there there's another one that cosplayed as the continue screen from Street Fighter Really? The continue screen, yes. And then there was another one that I saw, like you see it, but not the way that the people do it is um is uh, Max Headroom. He's the guy from he's like a cartoon from the eighties. Okay. He's a it's like kind of a plastic like all you kids will understand like all the uh, old people will understand who Max Headroom is. And it was sort of like what it is is that he's usually just a TV screen and just a character that comes out. Like he's kinda like a robotic type of character. Okay. And he has this background that's very distinctive. I took a, a picture with him. But that's one that I thought was off the walls. Like, you would usually just see the guy, but this was the guy, the cosplayer and the background. Fun. So that was good. And then what were the other ones? Um, what was our? What was my favorite? And yeah. I know you asked three questions. It was trends you saw. Trends. Really stood, stood out. out. And then your favorite. My favorite. Oh. Um... My favorite is still the toughest one. I really like the Beatles one. That was just, that was just really creative and really original. That's, it's something that you thought that you, it's like one of those, I think I was talking about it with the people online. It's like one of those, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. It's so simple to do, yet nobody really does it. So I think that's, that's why I, I particularly loved it. And it's just, there's just so many out there that you just can't, it's tough to find one that really stands out. That's the thing. Also, the thing yeah. is, I've noticed it when I when we're doing the, the favorite cosplay. They just you see so many you can't remember them all. And oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. When you do see it. You're like, this is my favorite cosplayer. But you see so many during the week, and you're like, oh my god, I forgot half of the cosplayers I saw. And then we'll be finishing up, and he'll be posting up the wrap up show online, yeah. and I'll be going through my camera, going, oh that one. <laughs> oh yeah, no same. Yeah, that happens to all of us. So it's just that's. I, I got to go with like right now. The one that really stood out was the Beatles one. So. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna answer the, the first question last. Uh, uh, the last question first. Um, I know that I do have a favorite cosplay, but I can't remember it. Um, I saw it on Sunday when I was walking out with you towards the dragon, the the drinking song panel. I literally saw it and I go, 
oh my god, da 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 da. And Christy goes, where? Because she didn't notice it. I, I, I saw it and it was just amazing. It, I cannot remember what it was, but it was just like, it was such a, a good costume to me that it stood out. Yeah. Um, as for... I don't think you actually, I don't think you actually even saw them because they were heading in. Um, as for trends, trends, steampunk, steampunk, and steampunk who bashed with something else. Uh, I mean, like, there are, uh, I just was looking at some of the pictures you had, uh, the steampunk X-Men. That was pretty cool. Um, like, you will find, steampunk is so rampant here, it's not even funny, and a lot of people like to throw, you know, X-Men, Justice League, this, that, anything, anything. Anything, and they will steampunk it up, and it works. A lot of them are really good. Some of them are really crappy, but most of them are really good. Um, the second... They had steampunk Texas pieces. Yeah. Well, they had the regular ones this year again. Uh, second thing, uh, second trend, Anna and Elsa, just rampant. Everywhere. I, a lot, I did see a lot of them, but a lot, not all of them were the same. Like, you had the classic Elsa and Anna. You had, yeah. I saw a lot of the, uh, I saw, saw a lot of the Anna green dress. But I saw a lot of the Elsa and the ice you dress. Know, like I saw uh, so from Lolita or something. They changed. They, they yeah, they changed a little bit of it. Yeah. The mashup. Um. Uh. I'm trying to and the third third costume I saw a lot of Nightwing. Oh my God, the amount of Nightwing. I I I love Nightwing. He's my favorite symbol right here. Uh, he's my favorite guy in the world. But the thing is, the amount of like they have a lot of Harleys, a lot of Jokers, a lot of that. Harley is a big one, Batgirl even. But the amount of Nightwings is unbelievable. How many Nightwings are? I would say there's uh, really Harley and Nightwing are probably the biggest two cosplays out there, uh, in my opinion, because the amount of them that they have. Um, you know, one thing that actually I was thinking about just now, a cosplay that they had a lot of last year and the year before, but they didn't have this year. There was no chorus from Avatar. Yeah, I, yeah, I, didn't I remember. I think it was. I think it was yeah, le I last year. Yeah, I last too. year, I could walk through. I, as we were walking through the buildings, I saw at least five or six. I was at every panel I went to. I saw one. I don't think I saw a single one this year. I saw one Avatar this time, but I didn't see any chorus, and I was surprised. I saw a few chorus. I saw maybe two or three chorus. I only saw one Avatar, and that was a. a Eight month old in his arm, in his mother's yeah, arm. Awesome. Oh, no, the the That's it. Uh, I also. I didn't see any brown coats either. Very. I was a little upset by that. Brown coats, for anybody who knows, was Firefly reference, but I didn't see any of that. Um, is, what was the other question? Trends? I think you got them. Yeah, yeah, you got them. Yeah, I mean, that was just the thing, you know, for me. I know, I, I think I, I probably saw a lot more than you did. I saw plenty of. Um, Mal Reynolds and um, Kaylee's, but all right. Yeah. All right. Um, before we get towards the end, we're going to talk a little bit, a little th bit about um, Atlanta and DragonCon itself. Uh, with DragonCon, you know, every con always has that booklet that has the program and all the information. We already showed you the booklet that has all the guests in it. Usually, for a con, any normal of the con, that would have everything. That would have the program. It would have the scheduling. It would have everything. No, that's just the guests. This has the schedules, the maps, um, DragonCon TV schedules, the panel panels, and all that stuff. So, um, by track. By, it, it organize, you can either organize it by track or by day and building, uh, which is, which yep, there's also an, uh, an app for the smartphones. They make a new one every year. It's free, yes, it's a free app. Yeah, and they're actually trying to make it, they want to make the app year round. Oh, so, so they don't they, have to make a new one every they year. They don't have to make a new one every year. So don't they say don't delete your DragonCon app. They actually plan on adding a photo gallery to it. Ooh. And they actually plan on doing announcements through the app first before Ooh. anything else. Oh, like on the website or all that. Um, with, the, with the app, it, it, it has a schedule. You can, you can you know, obviously, li like the guidebook app, you can like and make your own schedule. And then also, whatever panel you go to, you can't do it until the panel is already officially started. So no doing it ahead of time, you rate and put comments about the panels, the band performances, the autograph sessions, so that they, they, they want that feedback. So if you rate them and you give them comments, they know. Like when we went, to, we said we went to the Firefly panel. I put it on there that I, I had a blast, but the room was too small. 
So as long as you give them the feedback, they can see, okay, a lot of people love this event, and they all, either the biggest complaint was it wasn't enough room, or they, there was something else that happened at the panel they didn't like. So the, the app, the books, um, this year with the, I've heard one thing what they'd like to do to keep back on fake, on fake badges, as they will not announce, uh, they will not announce, they will not show what your badge is gonna look like until they start handing out the badges, which certain cons don't do, but I've seen some cons where they will show you, oh, this is kind of what your badge is gonna look like this year, so they can keep from people making forged badges. Um, but on this year's, which a lot of people know, and which is really cool, on the back is a coupon for Michael's store, which is the arts and crafts store. Uh, Michael's from the 29th to the 12th, so it's good until next week, and it's a 15% off entire purchase. Because God knows, con goers will use Michaels and they do tons of arts and crafts and you so this is actually perfect so I'm sure Michaels gave them a donation or something uh, and then I think there's Dragon Con TV which is a paid what yeah, actually I wanted to go into the app this is okay. a cool thing about the app is that if you go into there at whatever wherever building. building that you're in if you have my location on on the iPhone they will show, they will show you what is happening around the area at that time. That is an awesome feature that they had. Okay. I'm like, that was, and I did not find out about it until closing ceremony. So they're gonna try to, they're gonna try to push that more, try to make it more accessible on the screen, because I thought that was an amazing feature, especially at a convention like this. Because if you walk into like a building and you was like, oh, where the hell am I? Gets closed out. Oh, your panel gets closed out. You can find out what other panels are going on at that time. So, ar around your location. So, I thought that was an awesome feature. All right. Oh, yeah, that's definitely. I forgot about that. Um, and also, you can you and your friends can connect on through the app. Yeah. So that way, you know, if you can compare panels, or if it's, it'll show you. Oh, so and so's in the is going to this panel too. Or, oh, so and so's in the panel down the down the hall. Yeah. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Dragon, but yeah, DragonCon TV is a channel. On, on the official hotels. So it'll be at the Westin, it'll be at the Sheridan, it'll be at the, the Hyatt. I think it's yeah, it, um, I'm sure, probably even the Overflow is probably, I would. Yeah, no, they don't. No, it's, oh, it's just, five, it's only the five hotels. Did the that's Overflow it. have it last year? No, they no didn't. that's right, it didn't. Okay, no. It's only the five official hotels. Uh, it is a separate channel, and trust me, we knew the con was over when we went to the channel last night, oh, yeah. and it was a black, and it was a black screen. Uh, you they will have. It online too. Oh yes, it does have its own YouTube page and it does have its own Facebook page. Um, they will do uh, commercial parodies, show parodies. Uh, there was. The they, they they do the Adult Swim. Well, they'll have the black screen and they have comment uh, questions and comments from uh, u usernames, and they will answer it obviously in a comedic way. They had Poetry Corner where they did poems. Based, on, based on the fandoms. Then there's Bob and Carl, the janitors, sci-fi janitors. Sci janitors, they're little pan puppets, they are adorable, and they have their own skits. So Dragon Con TV also, well, the, but the best thing I think is with Dragon Con TV is they will either live feed the big panels or they will re-air re, um, re them. When the Once Upon a Time panels we went to, they live aired them, and then there was a couple of times where we turned it on and they would have reposts, rebroadcasts of, yeah. um, like of like Star Trek. Yeah, oh wait, oh wait, uh, okay. I just wanted to actually say, I actually uh, wanted to go to a panel and I woke up late and everybody's like, you're not gonna make it. I'm like, yeah. And we turned on Dragons on TV and the panel was actually on. I'm like, this is awesome. I'm not missing the panel, so. Oh, and also this year, I don't know if they did it in previous years, but this year they also live feed the Dragon Con Parade yes. on Saturday. With, and then so. we, and then we did it later on. And then re-aired re it later on that day. Yeah. Usually, well, yeah, like it, in your program booklet, they will show you a schedule, and most of the time they are read broadcast because they want to film it, and then they have to bring it over to where their center is and put it to tape. Clean it up, yeah. And clean it up and maybe all that. But sometimes, most of the time, they do do it live. Like they were, like Tom was saying, he wanted to go see a panel, but we couldn't see it. I was like, oh, let me see if it's on Dragon Con. It was Spartacus. No, I thought it was Arrow. Nope, it was the Spartacus one. I went to oh. the Arrow one live. Okay, well, the Arrow one, or the Spartacus one, he wanted to see, and he was able to watch it live through Dragon Con TV. I wanted to go to the parade, 
But obviously, it's crowded on the street. So guess what? Dragon Con TV had their parade out. I want to go to the different costume contest. Hey, Dragon Con TV was airing it later on. So it's a really awesome, really, really cool thing to like see because most of the time, all these panels are closed out. Like yeah. it, it's a lot of the main panels. But one thing I would like Dragon Con TV to do is to have other panels in there as well, not just the big ones. Like, yeah, it's cool to have rebroadcast, but maybe later on in the night when everybody's maybe not a little there, maybe have some of the other panels in there. Like, maybe I want to see the, the Miss Star Trek pageant. That I miss. Miss Star Wars as well. So it's like, it would be, it would be cool to see other... Um, other panels like throughout the night or events happen through it the wrestling yeah wrestling have wrestling on on maybe like late night yeah whatever time it is have it afterwards yeah Yeah. exactly like at least like try to have it 24 hours so there's something consistently on that would be cool to have so that's that's what i think so but all right um also another yeah Mm -hmm. um I didn't see it this year, but in the past years, uh, every time you go into a panel, if you get there early and you go and sit down, uh, they have usually screens on the side where they'll actually, when they're videotaping it, in case you're sitting in the back, you can still see them. They put Dragon Con TV up there so you can actually read them. I mean, last year I was, I almost fell out of my seat a few times laughing at some of the stuff that they put up, but it's really, uh, Dragon Con TV is just so, so great. And uh, I mean, like anybody who wants to post something to it, they usually, they if they like it, they'll put it up for you, you know? So, and the phone number for the telethon. Oh, remember? Yeah. We actually called it up, and they left a. It was a pretty yeah. sweet message. It was an actual like telethon type of yeah. thing. So, but, all right. Fake number they put yeah. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, next thing, another dragon thing, Dragon Con done is they always do the blood drive. Uh, well, they do the uh, Dragon Con blood. They blood drive. Uh, it's pretty much an all non weekend thing. You can even do it on pre reg day. They have set aside uh, rooms and they basically just donate blood. Oh, it's the Sheridan and Marriott. Um, they those are locations. And you can give blood at any time during pretty much during the weekend. Um, they will you get a free shirt. Tom has Tom Tom I know has been doing it for a couple of years, so my mother's been giving blood for years, uh, through other things, so I decided uh, about two th- two years ago you know what, I'm here, I might as well just give some blood. I was, I was like, I think it was Sunday, I really didn't have anything left for the rest of the, for the, rest of the day. I was like, so if I'm tired or I pass out, it's no big deal, I won't lose anything. Um, I was totally fine, and I really liked the idea of doing this, because to me it was, you know, another way to help back the community, uh, which Dragon Con loves to do. Uh, last year and this year I did it on pre-reg day after I got my badge, I went over and you know, I was able to donate blood. It was, it's, you know, a, a nice thing. Another thing, uh, they, Dragon Con likes to help the community, and that's one of the things they do. Um, I don't know what else you were going to talk about with the blood drive, but, uh, but uh, they also have a food drive every year. And, uh, well, well, I was going to do the food drive first. The food drive, uh, I was actually just reading in the pamphlet about it. They uh, raise a lot of food, almost, you know, 100,000 meals, they say. You know, they, they do a lot with that. You can buy food, you can bring food, anything, they'll take it and they'll, you know, use it. Um, and then the last, the last thing is I actually missed it this year, unfortunately, because I thought it was Monday, not Sunday. It was Sunday morning. Uh, it's the charity auction. Uh, I love going to it. Half the time I don't buy anything there, but, you know, it's still a really good auction. They have great stuff, and all the proceeds go to help out a uh, charity in the area for Atlanta. I think you have, like, the official name. Yeah, they have the, they have the name. So, uh, yeah, but... Every, yeah. Every year they have every year they'll pick they they do a, a few charities but usually they'll have the one charity that's the big charity for the year. I think you said yeah, this year was two. Let's see, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's see. The big one that they had was the Atlanta Community Food Bank. That's a, that's one of them there and then the other one I think was the American Red Cross. I think that was the other one. Don't quote me on it, but I think that. Yeah, cuz last year was the yeah, was, so last year I know it had to do with um they did a charity where they did painting um uh, tennis shoes and they donated to um, I, th- I forgot what the cause was I almost actually donated because of the fact that some of that's if they had the artist painting ca- um, white tennis shoes yes. and you do, do designs on them and it was just awesome I, I, I'm not, I can't remember for sure what it was but um, next thing is, is besides what Dragon Con does then there's outside Dragon Con in Atlanta 
We already said the aquarium. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It's beautiful. Um, our friend Chris last year it was his 30th birthday, so we all pitched in, and we got him. T you can go swimming in the whale shark tank. It's after hours. Uh, Chris, you know, I, I almost think he had a heart attack when we told him. Uh, so th that that's a lot. Uh, you can also scuba dive. While we were there, people were scuba diving. Then on top of that is the World of Coca-Cola across the, um, the park, which we just went to. It's basically a museum for the Coca-Cola, and it's a tasting center because Coca-Cola originated here in Atlanta. Um, there's also the CNN building. There's a zoo. There's just so many things you can do here. Yeah, still Mountain Park is another big thing. Right. Uh, this year... Well, also there's all other events that usually happen the same weekend of Dragon Con because it's a land, it's a Labor Day weekend. This year was I think it was the college football game. Well, it was, it was every yeah, it was a. What it is is that every every weekend they well not every weekend every Labor Day Atlanta tries to put as many jam packed as many events into the city because they know Dragon Con is because Dragon Con is attracting those events here. So a big thing that happens is uh, Georgia Tech always has their big huge college football season like kickoff game here at the Georgia Dome which packs at least a hundred thousand the Bra the Atlanta Braves which is about maybe a, a 15 a 10 to 15 minute drive always has a three game series during the weekend because they know they'll get the pe they'll, the, they'll get the people and then the Phillips Arena always has concerts going on there this year it was Aerosmith well well uh, anyways but Aero more importantly Aerosmith was here Oh, celebrity here while we were eating dinner. Well, yeah, R. Kelly was apparently at the Hooters we were eating at. But anyways, uh, the Gay Pride Parade two blocks away from here. There's also the uh, yeah, cycling. There's always like there was a a lot of events going on. I think there was a golf tournament going on. There was depth, there was a race um, a race going on in Hampton in uh, Hampton, Georgia, which is not that far away. But they labeled it as the race at Atlanta. So. Atlanta has a lot that goes on during this weekend, a lot, and it's just, yeah, if you really want, like, if you're trying to find a destination where there's so much going on during Labor Day weekend, it's Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if we should talk more about Dragon Con, because we're going to keep going on and on yeah. and on we're and on and on. Uh, yeah, we're over an hour, right? So, Dragon Con, we love it. Okay. So. Highlight and low light of the weekend. I'm gonna start with Ernie. Crap. Okay. Uh, then maybe you want me to give you guys a minute and I'll talk a little bit yeah. more. All right, guys. What? Okay. Obviously, you guys, I'm sure, either want to go to Dragon Con or you've heard of Dragon Con. So, if you've got any questions for us about Dragon Con or even people, other people for who probably watch this because of Dragon Con, just comment down below. I'm sure if we don't answer you, somebody will answer your questions. Uh, maybe if we can, we'll get in contact with Dragon Con, get them question, ask their qu ask your questions for you. We'll put it down below because we do actually know a few people who do work, uh, who have either staffed or volunteered. So we will try to get those questions and uh, to them, and we'll get, try to get you the answers. Uh, is that enough time? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Ernie. All right. My um, my highlight was the aquarium. I had a blast there. It was so much fun to do. It was so much fun to shoot there and shoot in the new environment and all the people there like, oh, let me see what you got on there. So a lot of people are asking about my equipment. The low point was probably the DC Marvel shoot, the big shoot that they had. And Alex, and um, they had a big photo shoot with uh, DC Marvel characters. I think it was um, Justice League of America versus the Avengers. It was a big, huge, big, huge shoot that they had. Problem no, is in the past it's been Marvel DC. This year it was the Justice League of America. It was the Justice League versus the Legion of Doom. Which oh, that that's what it was. Yeah, that's that's what it was. Yeah. yeah, it was a DC. Well, anyways, it was DC Marvel. That's the point of it. Usually. Usually. Now, um, the problem with that is that it's only it was invite only, and they really kind of like they were apologetic about it, which I get, but it was also I think it, I a lot of a lot of people were not happy about it. Like I was. Like, yeah, I didn't get invited to it, so what, you know what, I, it's, I can't get everything. So, you know what, I'm just going to go to something else. You know, I'll, I'll, I got over it. But yeah. some, photographers, some photographers were not happy about it. 
I know some videographers were not happy about it as well. So it was sort of like, it was kind of, it wasn't their decision. It was their decision, but it was mostly because the hotel was in construction and they couldn't fit everybody there. So that was the reason why they made it invite only. Well, the so, thing was with the invite only, was it just photographers or was it cosplayers as well? It was, um, yeah, it was a, it was invite, I think, all across the board. Okay. Like, only invited cosplayers were allowed to do it, and also invited photographers and videographers. That were the only people allowed in that shoot. And it was just, it, it's like, like I said, I get I'm a it. DC person, I love oh. DC. I would have loved to have been able to go to that shoot. Exactly, yeah. Like, I would love, it would have been awesome to do it, but, you know, maybe set another side, another one for all the other people. Don't keep it exclusively to yourselves. I get it. You want the publicity. I get it that you want to show that, hey, I can do beautiful work. I get it. But, yo, give everybody else a chance. That, that, kind, of, that kind of ticked me off, and I know that a lot of photographers were not happy about it. So. And also the 10th floor at the Marriott, the, the whole cosplay lounge. It was good, but at the same time, you know what? You can find 4 billion other spots you can have photographs at. Yeah. That was my Okay. Idea. Okay. Steven. Um, highlight and low light. My highlight was probably just seeing old friends. That was really cool, making new friends and getting to talk to people in the industry. Um, since I'm such a newcomer to it, and it was that was really cool and inspiring. So that was probably my highlight and the aquarium. But yeah, just being able to talk to people in the industry that have been in it, and that was really really good for me. And my low light was probably just. Um, a lot of the panels I wanted to go to were just always already like filled even if I showed up like a half hour early so that kind of bummed me out but other than that I really had a really really good time so there's not that many lowlights highlights uh, panels uh, all the panels I got to I was very happy with them uh, I got to see a lot of people like Pandora Celtic wasn't here last year like I said I love that they were back um, they're pretty, really cool, cool guys. All of them, I love them all. Um, uh, low light was actually I ended up going to two or three things I wanted to, so I couldn't go to the aquarium with them. That was a little upsetting. Um, I said another low light, and I can't even think of what it was. It's actually more important. I have no idea. Um, but uh, I mean, there was. That was actually it. The biggest low light to me is as many panels as I want to go to, it always seems that two or three of them are running at the same time. It's going to happen. And I, I, I know that, but it always happens to me. Um, actually, I went to a panel that I wanted to talk to you about before that I forgot was uh, the Music Jam. It was uh, It's basically a, about like a two and a half hour panel. It's basically just parody yeah. v music yeah. videos yeah. done yeah. by it. Yeah. If you ever come to Dragon Con and you have nothing to do on Sunday night, go to it. It's hilarious. I was falling on my seat laughing. But, um, you know, that, that, like, like I said, highlights, uh, the great cosplay is great, panels, great everything, uh, low lights. Sometimes you can't get to see everything you want. Okay. Um, definitely the aquarium was, like, one of the major highlights for me. It's, it was, I always liked going to the aquarium, but having to see all those cosplayers was fantastic at the, at the aquarium. But, uh, yeah, and then the cost, uh, the band going to the performances. I just love, um, I love music, and I, like, I when I was always as a kid, if, you know, it was homework time or studying time, my mom would be like, oh, go study, go do your homework, turn your music off. I'm like, no, I can't do it in silence. I have to have my music. So having, listening to all the, the bands perform was just, it's fantastic. Uh, low light, I think for me, as, as much as I've been complaining the past few cons that I'm getting so used to the bigger cons and the smaller cons don't do for me, this one it's just so big. It, I think the overcrowding is getting a little they much. Oh, yeah. It's they, they, they the crowding. But also with you saying how they, they pack so much into Atlanta at once, I think that has a lot to do with the overcrowding. So even the streets are overcrowded, let alone the the, ho the con hotels, the America's Mart, the food court. It's just everything is just a zoo. Yeah, I'm sure some of you con goers know, using the elevators <laughs> on con days. Oh my lord. We got, especially at night. night, we got so much exercise using those stairs. It wasn't even funny. Yeah. Our asses look great. <laughs> <laughs> My calves. I just want to say, uh, I, as for everything going on in Atlanta, I do remember uh, last year, actually, when we were going to our hotel room, uh, we were going up to it, and somebody's like, 
Sora, Sora, I think you and Chris were in a uh, costume, and they're like, "Where? What are you guys doing here?" And we're like, "Oh, Dragon Con, da 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 da." And they're like, "We're like, what are you here for?" And they're like, "Oh, the food festival that's three blocks that way." And we're like, "Oh, we're three blocks in the other direction." And I'm sitting there like, "Now I understand why it's so crowded." They had like th four or five events that all happened at the same time, and I don't want to sound cynical, but maybe you guys should try uh, spreading these out a little bit, <laughs> make it a little less crowded, but. Yeah. That's just that's that's, that's that's my personal yeah. feeling. Yeah. That's Atlanta. That's not correct. Right. Yeah. All right. We're coming to the end here. Ratings on a scale of one to ten. One being horrible. Ten being fantastic. Best thing on earth. And why? All right. Tom wants to start. Um, I'm actually gonna rate Dragon Con on a little low this time. This time. I'm I'm actually gonna say about an eight point two, and that's really that's that's low. Trust me for me because I'm usually up. I'm usually up in 9.5, but I'm going to say 8.2, and it was due to the crowds this year. The it was the past few years it's been packed, but it was just way, way too packed this year. I mean, I feel bad for you being your first time coming here. It was I know, I know, but it was just it was more packed than it really ever has been before. So I'm going to say you know above an eight, but not even an 8.5 for me. I was actually going to say a 9 because, um, I, first of all, I thought it was really cool, this Dragon Con TV. I never saw that before at a convention. Um, I made a ton of friends. Um, I, whatchamacallit, um, I lost my train of thought. The Mets scored. Um, what do you call it? I made a ton of friends. Um, I got to talk to people in the industry. I got to see some of my guest friends, which was really, really cool. Um, and... Atlanta itself was just really, really cool, and yeah, I, the panels were great, and it was just so much bigger, and I've never seen that before. I had a really good time overall. Nine. Um, all right, I'm gonna go with an 8.8. .8. And the thing is, is, is like I would have given it a nine, but then Tom mentioned about the crowding, and I think that kind of brought it down a little bit because it is way too crowded, and Atlanta's just not big enough to handle it all. They said for Dragon Con, 62,000 attended. That bill last year was 57. And that doesn't count any guests who were already in the hotel that wandered the hotel while the con exactly. was going on. Yeah, exactly. So it's just 62 that paid for a badge to come in and walk, come in and attend Dragon Con. So the big... That, that's the total numbers. Okay. Yeah, the total numbers were 62. And it just sort of like... Yeah, it, like I'm saying, I don't know if you heard me, but they got to take over America's Mart. They have to. If they want to really spare, like disperse the crowds and not make it as big as possible, they got to start spreading it out somehow. Either that or they have to leave Atlanta. That's one of the big things. And that's the city will not let that happen. They make the, Atlanta makes way too much money. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, Atlanta makes so much money off of this convention that they can't. They will not let Dragon Con leave. So... They got it, like the crowding, yeah, brought it down a little bit, but overall, it's still a fun time. Yo, Steven had 11 of these. 11 of these, and he had great. He's wandered into a Waffle House, had no idea he was at a Waffle House. <laughs> so that was fun there, you know. How often were you going to see, like, male Sailor Moons? Yeah, exactly. How often are you going to see, like, right. what else was there? Yeah, but you know what? It, it's a fun time. That's it. Yes. You're going on a rant. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to give it a, a nine, too. It's the crowding, I don't think, would bring it down as much as I originally was going to uh, rate it. I'm like, you know what? No. The crowd, the, the overcrowding is not going to bring it down below a nine. Uh, I just, I always have fun at Dragon Con. I, I think also half of the fun is just hanging out with you guys the whole weekend. The road trip down. We had invited three of my friends um, down here for Dragon Con because two of them had moved away a couple of years ago to South Carolina so this was easy access for them because it's only like a four or five hour drive for them so it was definitely a lot easier and it was fun seeing them and then like we said the, the road tripping down here just hanging out and having fun is just so much but it's my turn one more thing no I was going to oh, okay no you can get it because I'm almost I'm pretty much done I, I also threw out my back Monday uh, morning. That's a part of the reason, and that was due to sleeping on the floor. But that's uh, part of the reason why I got such a low rating from me. Oh, that's not the con's fault. We had seven people in our hotel room. We had three people in the hotel room. 
All right. Yeah, true. All right. <laughs> so, okay, so we're sticking to four or five people. All right. Um, so the average then is an 8.75, which is not bad. That's actually that's kind of low for what we normally rate Dragon Con. Uh, usually, Dragon Con doesn't get lower than a nine rating with us. But um, yep, that's Dragon Con, and obviously. You guys are doing. If you got obviously, if we keep if we keep coming back, and the fact that our average has never gone down below like an eight and a half, that means something. All right. Also, unfortunately, the hotel rooms are well, we're talking about almost sold out already. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, one of the Sheraton and the Western are booked. booked. Um, the Hyatt, the Marriott, and the Hilton haven't opened up yet. Hyatt is opening up like Thursday, I think. Yeah, a couple Thursday. days. Maybe no. when this is up. It'll have opened. Yeah. 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 So probably like 10, 20 minutes, you don't get Yep. All right. Now, the last question. Will you come back next year? Yes. Tom, we know. Tom, yes. 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 I'm definitely coming back next year no matter what. Um, Stephen, yeah. You're not going to be in the country. If if I could, I would. All right. Well, that, that's that's good enough for us. If th That is good enough, I think, for all of us. You would, you would. You would, you yeah. would come back. Okay. Ernie. Mine's a maybe, yeah. only because we have other things planned for 2015 that kind of gets in the way of Dragon Con. Money and well, time wise. Money and time wise, but I have a it, I have a good shot of coming back because I got I just found out I got Labor Day off from work for next year, so I, it's a possibility that I will be coming back personally. If if the money if money allows and for next year, because I've got there's a couple of things that might be happening next year. If money allows I will I'll try to come back we may not do our week road trip yeah. but we'll definitely try to come down like we come down Thursday leave Monday yeah, yeah all right all right that is Dragon Con 2014 uh, if you want to see any pictures we've taken any other extra little things um, follow go to our Facebook page uh, at fans POV uh, any other of our videos, coverage, obviously subscribe to us here on YouTube. Our website is www.thefanspov.com. Follow us on Twitter at thefanspov. YouTube, thefanspov1. Instagram, Vine, DeviantArt, Tumblr. We are on everything. Pinterest. Oh, yes, we're also on Pinterest. Pinterest. We're on Pinterest, yes. There's a few others we used to be on, but we really don't do anything anymore. Yeah. 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 All right. The next time you see the fans POV, and it's pretty much us. I think there will be three of us and a couple of people. We'll be in one month at Anime USA in Washington D.C. October 3rd through the 5th. I will be naked. No, we won't be naked. I will be. No, he might be if he has enough drinks in him, which we do I plan a couple of parties. I will be in my birthday. All right. Uh, yes, it, it will. If you see us, it is Ernie's birthday that weekend, so you better, if you see him, you say happy birthday and buy him a drink. Like we won't be. Sure, right. No, no, they won't be. <laughs> All right. I am Chrissy Lawler, and thanks to Ernie, Tom, and Steven. We will see you guys around later.